we have a golden chain, and maybe this would be a benefit you can remember. This is called the golden chain in Hadith. And you, it'll help you with time too. MashaAllah, we, we, we had the kids in the retreat, they all memorized this chain, MashaAllah. So they had their first chain. Uh, you have a hadith which the Prophet said, do not oversell the sale of your brother. Like, you know, when someone is uh, offers someone a sale, and you say, cancel your sale with him, I'll sell it to you for cheaper. Mm. This haram. After someone agrees to a sale, you can't come say, don't give it back, I'll do it at a cheaper price. So, don't sell over the sale of your brother. The hadith is, is, a, is, is chain is called the golden chain, meaning it's the most authentic chain in hadith. And it is from the Prophet he's the one who made the statement, right? To Abdullah ibn Umar, To Nafi'ah, Nafi'ah was the free slave of, of Umar, the free slave of Abdullah ibn Umar, to Imam Malik, right? So if you get this, so you get Malik from the Atba'a Tabi'een, Nafi from the Tabi'een, Abdullah Umar from the Sahaba to the Prophet. AT at the You follow? So this is that golden chain. So if you want to mark time, you can see how close Na uh, Malik, rahimahullah, was to the Prophet. Only a companion and the followers of the companion, then Imam Malik. If you want to extend it down to make this chain is still the golden chain where it's narrated in the books, you would go to under four, you can go to five, to a shafi. And then six to Ahmed ibn Hanbal. And that hadith is collected by Ahmed ibn Hanbal, related it in his Musnad. So that's where you can find that hadith with this chain. The Musnad of Imam Ahmed. So in narration, you can see how close. So the next generation is Shafi and the next one is Ahmed. Right under there, yes. No, if you want to talk, you're going to go from here. Okay. So when you would relate, you would say, Ahmed ibn Hambo relating his Musnad from Shafi to Malik to Nafi to Abdullah ibn Umar to the Prophet that the Prophet said, do not oversell the cell of your brother. Right? So the chains go up that way. But I'm just showing you far as in terms of our generations, we can see how close these scholars were, right? All right, so now we said that we included now. Anyone after that in the time of the Khalaf is not going to be considered relate uh, the position of the Salaf. Rather, anyone after that are narrators of the positions of a Salaf. Right? And there's a big difference between being something and narrating something. It's a vast difference. Because when you're from the Salaf, it's confirmed to be from you. When you're narrating from the Salaf, we must confirm the narration of the one who is actually conveying that information. Because just someone says this is the position of the Salaf doesn't necessarily represent that that's true. Because we have to confirm. How do we do that? And one of the great scholars from the Salaf, his name was Abdullah ibn Mubarak. Abdullah ibn Mubarak, he said, and he was from the generation of the followers of the followers the highest level of them, at the top of them, because he learned directly from some of the followers, right? He was around the same time of Imam Malik. 
Abdullah ibn Mubarak, he said, Al isnadu min ad deen walaw la isnad la qala man sha ma sha. And this was related by Imam Muslim in his Sahih. He said, Al isnad. And Islam is the chain of narration. He said, Al Islam is from the is a part of the religion. Right? Without it, anyone can say whatever they will, meaning about the religion. Right? So if we're talking about Isnad, that's how we're going to confirm the narration about anything, especially when we talk about the Salaf. So this statement of Abdullah ibn Mubarak, and I told you he's from uh, the followers of the followers, generation, this generation, the third generation. He said that, that's his statement. And uh, it is related by Muslim, by Imam Muslim, he related it. And Imam Muslim was from the Salaf. He died in the year 261 AH, so he was from the Salaf. So Bukhari, Muslim, all of those, they're from the latter generation of a Salaf with the meaning of every 300 years. If we count it by the meaning of the first three succeeding generations of the Prophet, they're not counted among the Salaf. But when we broaden it based on the term what? By defining what term? Al-Qarn, al century. When we said, al -Qarn. Al Qur'an is a century, right? And the century we count linguistically as 100 years. So we can define the Salaf by the term Al Qur'an. And Al Qur'an is mentioned in the Hadith of the Prophet related by Tirmidhi, where he said, "Khairu Qur'ani Qur'ani, thumma ladina yilunhum, thina ladina yilunhum, thumma ladina yilunhum." The best of all the generations, Khairu Qur'an, Qur'an is the plural of Qur'an, are my Qur'ani, my generation. So when we define generation as 100 years, right, that's how we're going to get all the way to 300. So if we use by the hadith, so remember when I told you that this is the meaning of the word, we're determining the salaf to be two different times if we wanted to define them based on what? Century. Based on one Arabic word, the word al karam right? It's depending how you define it. It can be defined meaning succeeding directly after one another. If we say directly one after one another, we're going to say the Sahaba, the Tabi'een, and Atba'i Tabi'een, right? But it also can mean Miyasena, 100 years, if we define the term Qarm like that. So it can bear evil meaning. Both are correct in the language. And the Prophet Wasallam he mentioned the word. So here is something you can also indicate, which is very important that Sheikh Samir always mentions this, and it's important. It's work, but it's important. And I told you earlier, I said we have two ways of transmission. Well, two ways of transmitting information. We have one by way of a riwaya right? which is narration. I just tell you the hadith. The Prophet wasallam said, Khayru kuruni karni thumma ladina yalunuhum thumma ladina yalunuhum. Right? That's, that's narration. Then you have a diraya. So you have a riwaya and a diraya. Right? A diraya is understanding. 